All right, folks. 17-2. Here we go with 17-2. Should be the sense of taste. It is. Taste or gustation. So we just finished olfaction. We talked about that. Now we're moving on to gustation. Uh, as I mentioned in olfaction, there's a link here we'll talk about a little bit. All right, so gustation or taste. First of all, we have uh, gustatory discrimination. That means we taste things different uh, chemicals differentially. And this is the typical tongue map that you see. We taste bitter back here and sour here and salt here and salty here and sweet here. I just need to tell you that this is primarily true. I mean, we, we uh, how do I want to say this? This is not exactly true, but it's primarily true. This is not the only place we taste sour, but the sharpest sense of sour is right here. This is not the only place we taste salty, but the sharpest sense of, sense of saltiness is this part of the tongue. And the tip of the tongue is not the only place where we taste sweetness, but this is the sharpest area of sweetness right here. So the map, the tongue map is good. It's primarily true, but it's not absolutely true, which means uh, the, the senses, the discriminatory senses are more diffuse than we make them appear to be. In addition to the sweet, salty, sour, and bitter that we that's in even um, elementary school books, uh, we have some additional taste. We have umami, which is a meaty taste. It's due to glutamate. It the the tastent, the ligand. Let me just finish the word glutamate first. The ligand that binds the receptors in the sense of taste, we call a tastent. And by the way, it's a G protein mediated event, just like the sense of smell was. And the G protein is called Gus Dusen. Remember how it was? Remember, remember how it was called? Um, whoops! Remember how it was called? Gulf in the sense of smell for G protein olfaction. This is called Gus Dusen for gustation in this one. So the 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 umami taste is due to glutamate. This says. Uh, Amino acids, glutamate is an amino acid, and it can actually bind small peptides, and typically glutamate is one of those small peptides. You could be an oligopeptide, which means uh, probably eight or nine amino acids hooked together, and if glutamate's one of them, it can bind to them. It's actually been known to bind some nucleotides, so this is a sense of umami. We also have some receptors for water. Now, the water receptors aren't these receptors that um, actually give us this this sense of taste, like it's sweet or sour or bitter or anything like that. But it is linked to the hypothalamus because what we're going to talk about later in the endocrine chapter is when we drink, when, when our brain tells us we're thirsty and we drink, well, then our uh, water receptors bind the water and they send a signal to the brain saying you're drinking. So then you then you reduce that urge to drink because you are drinking. So it's a it's a feedback loop. So we do have water receptors. They're typically in the pharynx. They're not on the tongue. They're they're back in the throat on the pharynx. So this is gustation, the beginning of gustation anyway. Now this is a secondary receptor. So this is a secondary receptor, which means that there's a modified epithelial cell that actually binds the ligand. Here's your modified epithelial cell binding the ligand. And then this receptor cell must release neurotransmitters to tell the, the gustatory neuron to fire. All right. So secondary receptor, and we've already talked about this a little bit. With secondary receptors, you'll see this. You add the tastent, that's the stimulus. My receptor cell depolarizes, releases neurotransmitters, and here's the stimulus removed, so that quits depolarizing. This is called the, re uh, the receptor potential. All right? So this is called the receptor potential. What the receptor potential does is it releases neurotransmitters and causes EPSPs in my... Uh, gustatory neuron and then the generator potential occurs in my gustatory neuron this is my generator potential 
So there is a difference between the receptor potential and the generator potential. Back in the sense of smell, we didn't have a receptor potential. It was immediately the generator potential because it was a primary receptor. The neuron itself had the receptors for the ligands, the odorants. Now we have a modified epithelial cell, a receptor cell that has the receptors for the tastants, and they generate a, a receptor potential, which then release neurotransmitters, and then the generator potential occurs in the sensory neuron. Okay, so that's that, secondary, secondary receptor. Uh, we have different mechanisms by which we taste. You can see that our salt and sour channels are because the tastant binds hydrogen ions or sodium ions, and uh, they open these uh, channels directly. So this is an ionotropic, ionotropic receptor. All right. Oh, by the way, the salt, the way you taste salt is sodium binds here and opens a sodium channel. The way you taste sour is hydrogen binds a receptor and you open a hydrogen channel. Uh, I actually talked, uh, I talked like they were combined like a salt can open in a hydrogen channel it's not it's um if you're tasting salt it's because sodium is binding a receptor and open the sodium channels if you're tasting sour it's because hydrogen is binding the receptor and you're opening a hydrogen channel now of course as even as i say that you're going to say yeah but this food has kind of like a salty sour taste okay well then then you're opening both channels so that these are ionotropic. They directly open the channel. All right. Now, the rest of them, sweet, bitter, numami, are metabotropic. You should be getting used to those words by now. And that is the tastant binds the receptor, activates a G protein. The G protein turns on or, or causes the formation of a second messenger. And then this causes the receptor cell to release neurotransmitters. So it's metabotropic. This is ionotropic. Salt and sour is ionotropic. I typically test on this, just so you know. Salt and sour ionotropic. Sweet, bitter, numami are metabotropic. They go through a G-protein mechanism. These are the gustatory pathways. As you see, they go to the solitary nucleus and the medulla oblongata. They go through the solitary nucleus. They do. They do go to the thalamus. All right. There's the thalamus. Uh, remember that uh, olfaction did not go to the thalamus. And, uh, and remember that 90% of all sensory input goes to the thalamus. But olfaction did not go to the thalamus. Gustation does go to the thalamus. All right. And then from the thalamus, it goes to the insula. This is the insula right here. If you were to stick your finger through the lateral fissure you would touch the insula. So that's the insula. And the uh, gustation goes to the insula. That's where you have the sense of taste. Oh, look at this. Remember that the cranial nerves that, uh, uh, well, I won't say that. The cranial nerves that carry these signals are 7, 9, and 10. 7, 9, and 10. Those are the cranial nerves that uh, hit the tongue. All right. What if I, so, how do I want to say this? I've tested on this before. What if I said, What if I said something like this? You tasted something that was peppery hot. It was peppery hot because this peppery hot food contained a compound called capsaicin. That's the compound in hot peppers. And I said that this was carried by the trigeminal nerve. All right. Well, you would scratch your head because you would say the trigeminal nerve, cranial nerve number five, by the way, just let's be clear, doesn't service doesn't have a sensory service to the tongue i mean it has a motor service for mastication it allows you to chew and it has a sensory 
um, function for the cutaneous senses in your head, your face and, and neck and head. But it doesn't service the tongue per se, or not at all really, but it, it is involved in, kind of involved in the sense of taste, in that it allows us to taste what we call peppery hot. Well, this is not a true uh, taste sensation, but it's added to the overall quality of how we uh, how we perceive our food, because this capsaicin binds receptors. They fire, and these receptors are typically in our pharynx and the, uh, the cheeks of our mouth, and they fire and they go to their brain, and they add this peppery hot sensation to our food, but that's not the primary taste picked up in your insula. So there is more than just the, the, the facial glossopharyngeal and vagus nerve that is carrying our sense of taste for us back to our insula. There's more than just that. So taste is more complex than you would think. Now taste and olfaction is linked. Let me remind you that olfaction is a primary neuron and taste is a, a, a primary receptor, and taste is a secondary receptor. Let me remind you that um, olfaction is completely metabotropic. Metabotropic? Metabotropic? Whereas taste is, uh, there is two of them that are ionotropic, and two, three of them that are metabotropic. Metabotropic. Now, how are these linked? Because your overall sensation of taste, also in your brain, at the brain level, not at the receptor level or the or the neuron level, but at the, well, I shouldn't say neuron level, the brain's made of neurons, not at the receptor level, but at the brain level, your overall sensation of taste includes how it smells. And the classic example of this is when you're, you have a, uh, when you have a, a sickness, a cold, and you're stuffed up, your nasal passageways are stuffed up, it changes how you perceive your food. Your food seems to lose its taste. Well, it didn't, it didn't lose the, uh, the uh, sweet, sour, salt, and bitter in umami. It, it didn't lose that at all, the sweet, sour, bitter in umami. But what it did lose is the sense of, of smell to it. So that changes your overall sensation of the taste of the food. So these are linked together. And in fact, as you know, um, wine connoisseurs smell the wine, and they actually have special glasses that are angled, or t uh, the, the lip is angled, angled. So when you lift it up to your mouth, you can get the aroma of the wine before it touches your lips or goes into your mouth. And um, it's all linked, taste and smell, at the brain level. There's some disorders of smell and taste. Uh, these are taste. These are smell. And A means without. Hypo means less. And hyper means more. And means without. Hypo means less. And hyper means more. So without the sense of smell. Anosmia. Without the sense of taste. Agusia. A lessened sense of taste, hypogusia. A heightened sense of taste, hypergusia. A lacking the inability to smell, anosmia. A lessened ability to smell, hyposmia. A heightened ability to smell, hyperosmia. So these are disorders of the sense of taste or smell. And that's it for uh, that's it for s taste and the link between taste and smell.